Here it is, the third and final video in my series on the Kingdom versions of the Episode 1 Maximals. And honestly, I can't think of a better one to end on than the one and only Optimus Primal, a figure with especially big shoes to fill. While Cheetor is the most marketable of the gang, and Dinobot is the fan favorite, Optimus is the big bot, the fearless leader who holds the team together. If there's one figure they have to get right, it's this guy. So, let's see how well they did. Just like the original toy, Kingdom Optimus Primal turns into a silverback gorilla. There seems to be a bit of artistic license, but he's actually not that far off from the real thing. He's got the long arms, the stumpy legs, the posture. Pretty much all the key features of a real silverback are here. He does seem a bit more on the buff side, though, with broader shoulders, a narrower waist, and some very well-defined pecs. It kind of reminds me of Kong from the 2005 King Kong movie. Now, I don't think this is intentional, but since King Kong was always an inspiration for Optimus Primal's design, the similarity is far from unwelcome. The coloration is a bit less realistic. For one, despite being a silverback, there's no silver on the back. For two, the gorilla's skin is a lot paler than it should be. I'm guessing that this is mostly meant as an homage to the original toy, which used almost these exact color tones. I really like the eyes, though. As dark as they are, the glossy brown color makes them pop quite a bit. It's a little hard to pick out the pupils, though. I guess that brings me to the head sculpt. Once again, we're favoring realism over show accuracy, which means there's a lot of extra detail going on here. There are some really shallow wrinkles across the snout, and some very fine lines around the eyes. And I think this is the first Optimus Primal to properly capture the heavy brow line of a real gorilla. It's a really nice looking head sculpt, but it doesn't feel very Optimus to me. With Cheetor, and especially with Dinobot, I could see a lot of the character's personality in the face sculpt. But I have a hard time seeing the young and empathetic leader in this very gruff and grizzled gorilla face. The gorilla mode is actually pretty clean. The only robot parts that aren't concealed in any way are the feet on the back of the legs. Everything else is at least trying to hide, but not very successfully. The robot waist and thighs are covered by a large piece of shell on the gorilla's back, but it doesn't fully conceal everything. Especially from the sides, you can see the robot parts peeking out. Still, it's much cleaner than I've seen from other figures, even other Kingdom toys. By default, the gorilla stands in a knuckle-walking position. There is an alternate configuration, however, where you can stand him upright on his feet like he often did in the show, and like real gorillas do on occasion. I'm not a fan of the stock configuration, though. It makes the legs look like they're just floating a few inches away from his body. I prefer to fan mode this slightly by leaving the robot hips in their knuckle-walking position, which puts the legs right under him as they should be. Being a hominid, this beast mode has quite a bit of posability. The head can rotate at the neck, move up and down, and even pivot side to side so he can look around while knuckle walking. Shoulders are in universal joints and can pivot forward and backward. You get a bicep swivel, but that exposes some robot parts. The elbows bend almost 180 degrees, the wrists can swivel, and the fingers are hinged. No waist swivel in this mode, but the legs can hinge forward and back. You also get a very slight swivel at the ankle, a pivot, and a toe bend. So if you can get him to balance, you can get a lot of poses out of him. When standing properly upright, the gorilla mode is almost 5.5 inches tall, with an almost 8 inch arm span. This puts Cheetor at about the height of Optimus's hip, and Dinobot at about the height of his chest. And once again, not only does this match with their depiction in the show, but it's not that far from how their real world counterparts would scale together. I am honestly surprised that the cartoon was so good about keeping the animals in scale with one another. It really gives me an extra level of respect for the folks over at Mainframe. Whether you like the gorilla mode will depend on how much you like the real world accurate beast modes. It pulls off the lifelike gorilla look really well, but that comes at a major cost to screen accuracy. So if that's what you're looking for, you might be disappointed. But if you're like me and really appreciate the realistic beast modes, this is definitely the best gorilla mode of any mainline primal toy. This figure has a fairly basic transformation, much like the original Optimus Primal toy. Then again, you're going from a hominid ape to a humanoid robot, so it's pretty obvious how it should work. Extend the legs, fold out some robot feet, spin the torso around, and that's essentially the lower half done. The biggest deviation from the original conversion scheme is in the torso. 
Fold down the back, and inside you'll find the robot head on the opposite side of a rotating panel from the gorilla head. Spin that whole assembly around and tuck the gorilla head into the torso to bring it out. It's actually a pretty clever way to get an articulated head in both modes without too many extra pieces. Flip the chest piece around to expose the robot chest, and close the whole torso up. Bring up the shoulder pads, get the arms positioned correctly, and you're done. In robot mode, Optimus Primal bears a strong resemblance to his animation model. But unlike the previous Kingdom toys I've looked at, he's actually far more detailed. Even aside from the molded in fur that simply wouldn't have been possible on a 90s TV budget, there is a ton of extra tech rebel on his newly exposed robot parts. Some of the details are carried over from the toy, especially on the arms, but most of it seems completely original. This means you get less of a Roger Rabbit effect, but it makes it much more visually interesting. This theme continues into the head sculpt. It's very much the head from the cartoon, with the domed helmet, curved horns, split faceplate, even details like the squares on the base of the horns, and the indentations by his eyes. But there's also a lot of extra panel lining that wasn't there in the animation. Trust me, I checked. It's an interesting approach to take, but I think it looks really good, and is still very recognizable. A lot of the coloration from the gorilla mode carries over into this mode, so this Optimus has a little extra gray on the chest and hands. The rest is very screen accurate, though. He has a nice bright white on his thighs and biceps, and a really bold red for the kneecaps and other details. The only real inaccuracies I spot are with the hips and toes, which are cast in the same dull blue as his head instead of their proper red and gray, respectively. But I think the big problem with this guy's deco is, once again, the durability of the paint. Just like Dinobot, there are some pretty big paint chips on this guy, particularly on the knees and biceps, where they rub up against some of the shell kibble. The worst of it, though, is on his thighs. There is simply not enough clearance between the thigh pieces and the waist, so when you try to move his legs, they rub together, creating massive scuffs on the inner thighs. Thankfully, it seems they've fixed this with the recently announced Beast Wars Again release, which casts the thighs in white plastic, meaning there's no paint to rub off. Anyway, on to articulation. The neck is on a ball joint, so it can swivel, look up and down a bit, and tilt very slightly. The arms are the same as the gorilla's arms, so you get the same universal shoulder, butterfly joint, elbow, wrist, and fingers. Now that we've gotten the shell pieces out of the way, the waist can now swivel. The hips are on universal joints, but again, paint rubs. The thighs can swivel, you get over 90 degrees of bend at the knee, and there's a swivel below the knee for a little bit of foot rotation. Lastly, the ankles can pivot forward and back, and can tilt inwards. The piston piece is on two ball joints to allow for this, but the range is still rather limited. Still, you can get him standing flat-footed in most poses, and if you really need more range, you can still play around with both sets of toes. The figure comes with only two accessories, in the form of his twin swords. Thankfully, his thumbs curl in enough for him to hold weapons without relying on the stiffness of the finger joints, so the swords will never fall out on you. That thumb is all that's holding the swords in place, though, so he can't hold them underhanded to recreate the double sword effect from the original toy, at least not without aftermarket accessories. The swords can be stored on the back when not in use, though, which is nice. But if that's not enough weaponry for you, don't worry. Just like in the cartoon, this figure has a pair of shoulder cannons and double-barreled wrist cannons built into him. You have to open up the torso to fold out the shoulder cannons. In fact, the instructions tell you to fold them out during transformation, but they are entirely optional, if a little fiddly. All of the weapons are on hinges, so you can adjust the angle if you want. And if you've been following my shorts for long enough, you might already know that all of these weapons are usable in gorilla mode, just in case you want to push the limits of sanity. They're all blast effect compatible too, which is the only bit of combat compatibility on this toy. Okay, there is one more spot for blast effects. There's a 3mm post on the bottom of his butt flap, where you'll also find his prime jets molded in. So you can make him look like he's flying, complete with a flight stand port on the back of his waist. Though it's only one peg, and there are two afterburners, so it might look a little weird. In robot mode, Optimus stands 6 inches tall. This puts him a head taller than Cheetor, and half a head shorter than Dinobot. This makes him a little bit taller in proportion compared to the show, where he's almost a full head shorter than Dinobot. It's nothing egregious, though. All three still look really good on a shelf together. While he doesn't go above and beyond the usual standards of Transformer design the way Dinobot did, Kingdom Optimus Primal is just as successful in capturing the character. 
The Gorilla Mode strikes a perfect balance between realistic and powerful looking, the Robot Mode is well detailed and fully featured, and as simple as it is, the transformation actually has some clever ideas to it. He definitely looks at home as the centerpiece of a modern Beast Wars display. If you can find him for retail price, you should definitely pick him up. You won't be disappointed. Now once again, this figure is two years old at this point, so finding a copy at retail price might be difficult. But this figure is getting a cartoon accurate redeco as part of Takara Tomy's Beast Wars Again series in a two-pack with Leader Megatron. Not only that, but the set will be available for the same price as a Leader and a Voyager combined from some retailers. So as long as you're also interested in that Megatron toy, you may still have a chance to get this figure.